Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting video. Today we've got on the bench here a Setchel Carlson vacuum tube CRT television. I believe this is a black and white CRT TV. Um, the model number is a 16P65. Um, these were made in St. Paul of all places. Uh, I live in Minneapolis, which you know is just a stone's just across the river. Um, so this TV was actually like made, you know, in my freaking neighborhood, which is pretty cool. Um, but some of the documentation, um, you know, that came along with the TV seems to indicate that it was made somewhere after October 29th, 1965. Um, so 19 mid mid 60s ish vacuum tube CRT television. Uh, a co-worker had alerted me to this. He found it face down in his back alley behind his house um, after like a huge rainstorm. So it has it had been like very heavily rained on. Um, and so I let it's been drying out on the bench here for about 30 days or so. I opened the back and you know open, let it air out. Um, so today we're gonna uh, we're gonna do a little tour of the TV, see you know all the little quirks and features that it has. Um, we are going to try to plug it in and see if it turns on at all and if it does you know what kind of image does it have can we make can we you know can tweak the image does it need some like adjustments um we're going to go over the like documentation that came with it and some of the cool um literature that it has with it and uh you know hopefully we'll play some games on it at the end of the episode if it if it works starting off the tour right away at the front controls here we've got what i assume is the fine tuning now um we've got the uh, UHF VHF channel selector there. We've got the brightness or like the contrast knob here And then this is the uh, power and volume knob along with a, uh, a beautiful looking uh, Wood a brown uh, cloth grill which like somehow is actually in like pretty decent shape Moving to the top of the TV. We've got what I assume to be is you know, maybe not the original antenna, but certainly not uh, you know, certainly the one that was used with the TV. Um, and there are also some of these uh, extendable guys here, um, which you know, they do extend, even, even to this day. Uh, so that's actually like pretty, that's pretty decent there. Uh, that one's a little stuck. But uh, yep, so they've got some collapsible uh, internal antennas on top, along with a totally a solid wood um, enclosure. Here's a look from the side. You can get a really good look at the, the, the veneers that they used here. It's actually a really um, in really good shape. It's really too bad this thing was rained on as much as it was. Um, you'll see when we get towards the back, there's some there's some water damage because of it. But um, really, really good uh, like walnut. And finally, we're at the rear of the set. Um, again, you can see uh, such old Carlson Inc. here, uh, St. Paul, 12 St. Paul, Minnesota. And model number 16P65 uh, should run at about 125 watts, so we'll make sure to stay under that. It also has like one of these annoying like the power plug can't like you can't have the TV running without the back going, so I'm gonna have to use like a little cheater cord or something um, to run this thing without the back on it. Um, but at the top here, you can see we've got our um, some linearity controls for top and bottom. We've got the horizontal hold. The brightness adjustment and the vertical, the vertical hold. Um, and then finally, we've got the VHF and UHF hookups. So let's get the back off this thing and uh, let's also check out some of that documentation. Of course, everything back in the day used to come with the freaking schematic. Uh, you know, stapled right to the dang machine because uh, you know, back then people you know how to fix stuff. Um, and also another thing that's interesting about this set is it's got like a metal cup for the tube there. Um, I've never really seen that before. Usually that's always made out of like foam and it just like breaks and gets all crappy. But that's like a uh, that's a solid metal uh, little protector guy. So that's something I haven't seen. Um, but here you can get a kind of a tube layout there. Um, we'll get a better uh, view of the schematic here coming up. So we'll put this to the side. And here is our first look at the inside of this TV. And now there's a couple of things that strike me as uh, very interesting about this set. Uh, the first thing, obviously, very happily, uh, it is a transformer set. So um, it's not like a, it's not gonna like kill me in two seconds kind of a thing. 
Um, another thing that I find uh, very interesting, it's got some sort of like uh, silicone tube replacement thing down there in the corner. I'm not sure if that was factory or not. In fact, if I'm looking at the, uh, if I'm looking at the schematic right here, uh, that says that is a ZR, uh, that's the power rectifier. And it's supposed to be a ZR1067. That might actually be factory, but I don't know. It looks like it's some sort of weird aftermarket, like modern tube thing, but maybe not. Um, another thing I find very curious about the set is it's actually kind of the chassis is mounted vertically up and down um, as opposed to like flat along the sides. And so it's kind of mounted looking back at you, which I find really cool. Um, the obviously you can see here, um, you know, that's the. That's the water damage that happened to it. Um, again, it was found outside my friend's house, face down in the in the alley, getting rained on. Um, so, you know, what are you gonna do? But um, the thing that I find most curious about it is, uh, you know, it, it's a wood, it's a wood CRT TV chassis, you know, solid wood. Um, I expected there to be some asbestos somewhere, because <laughs> it's giant. It's basically a giant fireball um, and I couldn't find any asbestos on it. I think they may have gotten around that by having all the tubes and stuff mounted vertically like this and so it didn't have to like put asbestos in here um, which is great news for me because I don't touch anything that has asbestos in it. I, some other tube related observations that I've made is it, it definitely has the um, you can see there the original uh, or at least it has an original such old Carlson uh, CRT in it still it hasn't been replaced or anything um, and every single one of these tubes that I've looked at here closely, you know, somewhere with shields on them, and I can't tell, but um, every one of these are actually Suchel Carlson original tubes. And so it has a full set of original Suchel Carlson vacuum tubes. And um, I'll enhance on one of them here to kind of show you something that's cool about it. You can see here at the bottom of this tube, you know, this is like the Suchel Carlson tube, and it says Japan. So the Suchel Carlson, um, in 1965 was purchasing vacuum tubes for their uh, TVs made in St. Paul, Minnesota from Japan, which to me is like logistically mind blowing. And like, it's not like super after the world war, but like, you know, we weren't like best friends or anything still, I bet. Just check out how cool these tubes are here. These are again, all original Central Carlson's. Like check out how cool the plates look on here. These like see-through, uh, super chrome looking like uh, plates on these tubes are, are awesome. I popped off the flyback cage cover and man, I am completely blown away. This flyback looks absolutely brand new. It doesn't look like there was a single minute on this thing. It is freaking mint. I am, uh, I've never seen uh, a, a flyback like this look so clean. Like look at these, the high voltage wires, the red there. There's not like a single speck of dirt on that thing. It is mint in here. And of course it's got another uh, Setchel Carlson original tube in there. Um, so this gives me like really good hope. This thing, like based on the, the condition of this flyback, like this TV has a pretty good chance of, of working. Like before we find out whether or not this thing blows up into a giant fireball. I thought it'd be kind of fun to peruse the official TV owner's manual that it came with it. Um, feel free to pause, you know, the video and read it in depth. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I just read some stuff I find kind of cool. Uh, you know, congratulations and welcome to the editor expanding Suchel Carlson televiewing family. Oh man, it's good to be in the family after all these years. It says here, uh, 1928, Suchel Carlson engineers designed the first practical automobile radio, which I guess is you know, where the company got started. And then, you know, blah, blah, blah. They went into making TVs. Happy televiewing. Oh, thank, well, hopefully, we'll see. Um, on this page, uh, some pretty cool stuff about, you know, general information about the company. Another thing I find cool is uh, Suchel Carlson's entire line of low boys, which I guess, you know, we've got ourselves a low boy here. Um, consoles and table models are constructed from the finest furniture woods collected from all parts of the globe. Woods are the finest, uh, the world's most beautiful cabinet materials. You have selected genuine African mahogany, Appalachian cherry, or American walnut in hardwood solids and veneers. Painstakingly matched for beautiful surface continuity. Man, that is one way to say it. this TV is made out of some wood. Um, 
got something about DuPont in here, you know, hand rubbing some stuff, but check out that lady. She's looking pretty good. Um, the rest of the pages kind of just have, you know, generic um, instructions on the various different models, um, you know, how to change your channel or whatever, if you could figure that out. Um, tuning, uh, tuning all the vertical holds and things. Um, cleaning, <laughs> this is funny, cleaning the picture tube. Merely clean the surface occasionally. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks for the like full page, you know, write up on that. <laughs> and then uh, again, at the last last page, just again some more adjustment controls. Some other literature it came with. Uh, it came with like the original. I guess these are like warranty cards, I suppose. Um, which you know maybe this means this TV was never actually sold to a customer and it was like held in a store forever, which would make, maybe make sense why that flyback looks brand new. Maybe this TV was like never used, um, which like, you know, that's kind of a cool idea. But yeah, got all the original like warranty cards. It's a customer's copy, distribu distribu distributor's copy, and then, you know, to be filled up by the dealer. And so, you know, it looks like this TV was never actually sold based on this, uh, you know, card stuff I got here. Kind of cool. The final piece of documentation I came with was like this full page. Uh, schematic thing which is pretty freaking cool. I'll just take a moment to pan over here and maybe say some highlights um, in case I never get this scanned and uploaded so that someone else someday can have it. Um, here on this we've got the uh, the RF input signal coming in through the antennas. Up top here we've got the audio amplification stages. In the middle we've got what seems to be like the TV uh, video amplification and you know an output to the CRT and then finally at the bottom here we've got like the high voltage section um, and then at the far corner here we've got the um, again a copy of the the full tube layout and schematic of the back of the TV we've got the instructions for video IF alignment and then some measurements there oops I missed a section there's the like actual uh, section of the TV where the power comes in from the wall here and some interesting notes this is the moment we've all been waiting for uh, we've got it plugged in here to the variac and then variac into the kilowatt so we can watch the wattage and the voltage the uh, back of the tv says it shouldn't do anything more than 125 watts so if we start to see it uh going out of control we can shut it down real quick um you know it's you know, maybe that water damage shorts and stuff so let's uh, let's without further ado let's get her get her going Okay, so we're getting nothing. Let's try maybe this breaker switch is tripped or something. Huh, nothing. So we've either got a bad switch or this fuse, internal fuse thing here is blown for some reason which that's never a good sign either <laughs> but uh, i'm about to do some more looking into this and seeing if i can figure out where it's uh, where it's dead okay we've got to disassemble a little bit i got some clips on the power switch and i've verified the power switch does indeed work you can hear it as i switch it here Power switch works just fine. All right, I found what I believe to be the issue. Um, I took off this, this is like the resettable fuse thing and you know, it's a fuse, so there should be continuity from, you know, post to post. And so if we get our, if we get our probes on here, uh, there is zero continuity there. So I'm gonna put a little jumper wire guy on there. All right, we've got our little jumper wire installed there across the two leads. And now, if we, if we do continuity between the two plugs here, uh, we do get continuity um, across the two, uh, this is the AC input line. So um, obviously we've connected a, a wire to it, so <laughs> it's got continuity now. And uh, 
I guess the the reason I like pulled apart this whole like um, tuner assembly instead of like doing this first is because like normally on these old stupid TVs like the power switch is like always broken and so I was like I just assumed that the power switch was bad on this one and I didn't even think to like try this fuse thing um, but clearly um, you know this the power switch was fine and uh, the fuse was bad so let's uh, let's get this thing plugged in to the variac here and let's fire it up. And uh, I, I'm really excited to see what happens here. I, uh, I don't know. Let's see. Power switch is on. I'm switching the variac switch on now. Okay, variac is on. TV is theoretically on. We are at 40 volts and. Okay, so right now the TV is pulling 20 and 20 watts and, and, and lowering 17, uh, 16. Uh, okay, so it's at oh, okay, uh, 15, 15 watts, and we're at like just under, we're at about 40 volts. So um, that all seems fine. Freaking airplanes. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, it's definitely taking juice. I don't see anything lit up. It's only at 40 volts, so we're gonna go a little higher here. We're at about 50, 60 volts right now, and it's now at 20 watts and falling. So there's probably some capacitors and stuff reforming right now. Um, well, I mean, I guess I mean, I'm assuming there's some capacitors reforming. Maybe the guy who threw this out plugged it in. Well, no, he didn't because the, the fuse is bad. <laughs> the, capa the capacitors are definitely reforming. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm a little excited. We're at 90 volts right now. Okay, the, uh, the, the the CRT tube is now lit. lit up. We're at 51 watts at 90 volts. Oh, I, I, oh, oh, I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. We have, we have audio. I don't know if you can hear. Uh, but we do have audio. Or we have something going through the audio. We have, uh, we have nothing on the screen yet. We're only at 90 volts and st we're at 60 watts. Sound is promising though. Sound is very promising. We, whoa, we have something on the TV. We have something on the screen. Okay, we have a, we have a very dim uh, horizontal line. It's not a solid horizontal line. It's more kind of like, uh, it's, it's like it's trying to, uh, it's trying to do a vertical. Or it's trying to sweep vertically. Um, it's just a little weak. Let me go to 110 volts here. We're at 110 volts. We're still getting alien signals out of the radio. Uh, the tubes are very lit up. Um, all of these are lit up now, very hot. Um, we now have a very bright line. It takes up about 20% of the screen. So it's not a full deflection, but it's, uh, it's some deflection. Uh, I'll turn this all off and I'll turn it back on again. I'll flip the TV around. I'll show you what's going on on the front of the screen. But hey, this thing, uh, this thing freaking works, and there's a chance we might be able to watch something on this. We're all turned around here. I did do as the manual says and gave it a uh, a nice wash on the tube here. It actually turned out very nice for being face down, hardly any scratches on it. I cleaned off 118 volts. Let's turn on the power. Oh, check this out. Here's the. Here's the uh, channel selector indicator. So we've definitely still got something wrong with this TV, but there's there's certainly promise. So we just got to figure out why there's no, uh, why the, it's probably bad electrolytics, um, which is why the vertical is not showing, but um, it's not like total uh, vertical collapse. So there's like, you know, it's definitely trying. Well, since I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to get this whole thing working in this video or just call it quits here, I'm going to do at least a little bit what I promised. I'm going to try to at least uh, get the music from the Mega Man playing through the TV. So at least then we'll know that the tuner is working and really we just have to fix the, uh, you know, the, the horizontal issue. So I'm going to fire up the SNES and we're going to see if we can at least hear some Mega Man X on this uh, 170 year old thing. Bariac on.
power on. The RF converter box here should be on channel three. And so it should already be on the right channel. Turn on the SNES. See if we get any sound. Hmm. Well, looks like we didn't get any sound either. Uh, so there's definitely something going on. I might have to pull all the tubes out and try them in my vacuum checker. Um, but if I don't do that um, before the end of this video, then uh, we can call it here. All right, I spoke too soon. I did a little uh, Django 66 tube wiggle on the back. I noticed one of the tubes wasn't wasn't lit up, so I just gave it a little you know fondly wiggle guy. And uh, sure enough, it, uh, it fired right up and um, made some noise. So without further ado, this is Mega Man X on the SNES. That was Mega Man X on the SNES. Um, as promised, uh, I said I wanted to play some Mega Man X on this machine, and here we are playing it. You can, you can, you can definitely see, um, you know, the the game is displaying. It's going through the RF stages and everything totally correctly. So if we were to fix this um, horizontal or uh, sorry vertical issue here, which looks like it's totally just bad capacitors, and in fact, it's maybe even getting better. Um, as I let it sit here and um, do what it's doing, um, you know, it, this TV will totally return to a, it's totally functional. So it's uh, just incredible. Again, it was lying face down on the in my friend's alleyway, getting rained on. It got rained on like five times, just directly into the back of the TV, and uh, we just put a little jumper wire on it, and now it's working, you know, more or less. Um, so um, really glad we were able to at least give this thing another shot at, uh, at its glory time and uh, want to thank everyone for watching and we'll see you on the next one.